Well, welcome to Target Professional Consult. My name is Target. We're taking to financial reporting. So we're going to look at an interesting standard called IAS 10, event after reporting periods. Kindly subscribe to the YouTube channel, like and share the videos to your friends, and then comment. All your questions, kindly put the questions in the comment section. I'll pick them up, or you can also send to my private mail. I'll pick them up and respond to it. Thank you very much for watching. You can also request for the, all the lecture materials and then the other questions to WhatsApp, email, Facebook, we'll respond there. Good. So that please, this section is tuition section. And then join us for the question solving section. And then to get a full picture of or to gain a full understanding of the standards. So the first video will explain the principle behind the standards after getting the principle. Then the subsequent videos will explain the questions, how to approach the examination questions, and then you are fine. So let's go to the board. Good. So IAS 10, IAS 10, event after reporting period. So event after reporting period. After reporting, in fact, you can call it period or date. So event after reporting period or event after reporting date. So you can also make it date. Good. So all of them has the in IAS 10. Good. Now let's see how best we can um, go through this. Normally, use normal line to explain this. Now, event after reporting period. Before I explain, let me draw some online here for you. Let us assume that our financial year starts at January. So for 2019, our financial year started from where? January. Good. When are you going to prepare your financial statement? That's exactly 10 months, sorry, 12 months time, which you mean what? The last day of what? December. The financial statement must be prepared. So let's say December. This is what? December. That's 2019 financial year. So 2019 financial year will end here. Good. Now, right after the preparation of the financial statement, what do you think will happen? So let me write here preparation. So preparation. So the financial statement will be prepared here. Good. Then what do you think? When are they going to publish the financial statement or issue? So for ideally, financial statement prepared in December 2019 supposed to be published in, at the end of the first quarter of the following year. So the following year, at the end of the first quarter. So if your date ends at December, at the end of the first quarter, the end of the next three months. So January, February, March, so end of March. So ideally, last day of March, I have to publish or sign my financial statement and issue with all or issue with date. Issue with date or publish date. So that's the date that they will publish a financial statement. So the question is between December, where they prepare the financial statement, and March, where they publish it or they sign or the test will sign, what do you think going on? Like um what will happen? Would they prepare the financial statement and just put it in the drawer locket and then match the publish it? No. You must go to some sort of process or authentication. So right after the preparation, if I have to hand over to the, the verification team, that's the standard auditors. So here auditing process will go through until March when they are done. And then they will sign, the director signs, and then the chairman and then CEO, in fact, all those are charging governance. That 
need to sign, they will sign and then the financial statement will be published on that very day. Now, what do you think will happen? Transaction will occur. So transaction which occur between the day that you prepare the financial statement. So the date at which the financial statement will be prepared, the prepared December. And then the date at which the financial statement will be published or issued for general consumption. Good, for general public consumption. Good. So that any transaction which occur between these two periods are called event after reporting the E A R P event after reporting period. So it right? Good. So that is it. Basically, any transaction which occur between the day that you prepare the financial statement by just that before you publish the financial statement. Now this transaction have two features. One, it must occur right after the preparation. After preparing the financial statement, that transaction will come to reality. And then second issue is that this transaction must also occur before you publish the financial statement. If you publish it, maybe 31st, publish it the last day of March, right? Good. Then, the following day, that's first April, transaction okay. That is not what event of the reporting period because yeah, the financial statement has already been what published. So the day that you publish your financial statements, any transaction okay from that date, that one we does not go within the scope of IS then that's event of the reporting period. So, so that is it. So now we know. That's events. So events at the reporting period refers to both what favorable and unfavorable events that occur between the date at which the financial statement is being prepared and the date at which the financial statement is what issued or published. This event at the reporting period. It's a very short standard. We need like 15 minutes out of us. We're going to finish this standard too. Kindly join us when we are solving the question. Kindly join us when you are solving the questions. Good. Now there are two types of such events. So there are two types of what events after reporting period. There are two types. Let's see the type. First, we call it adjusting events. Adjusting word event. And then non adjusting event, non adjusting event. Good, non adjusting event. Now, let's see. Let's pick the adjusting event and let's do justice to it. Now, adjusting events, these are events after the reporting period that provide evidence or provide an indication of its existence before the year end. Let me take my time. Adjusting events, they are events. They are all events after the reporting period or they are transactions which occur after the reporting period, but they provide evidence of their existence before the year end. So, the transaction will occur between these two dates, maybe somewhere here, somewhere February, 20th of February, transaction occur. But there's an evidence that this transaction exists before the year and before the Zima. How we get it? So just that the transaction do not occur here, but there's an evidence that that transaction exists. Yes. Yes, you are thinking about spiritual, right? No, this is my spiritual rate. I can't say you don't do with spiritual things. So, though the transaction has not what materialized, yeah, it occurred in what after the year end, but there's an evidence or there's an indication that this transaction exists before the year end. So, that is it. Good. Now, let's see. 
the accounting treatment. The accounting treatment, as the name suggests, adjusting events. Such events must be what adjusted. It means that the financial statement must be what adjusted. So we said that the financial statement, we've already prepared it. Auditors are auditing it, right? Good. So let's call them. Now we are going to make some adjustments because we've gotten what events are reporting to it. So if there, that transaction is an asset, make sure that you include it in this particular financial statement, not 2020 financial statement, it will be 2020, right? In year 2019. So include it in 2019 financial statement because an adjusting event. Why? That's an evidence of that. Evidence that this transaction exists before the year end. So it must be part of this year because it was there before the year end. That's it. Now your tax or your duty is to know the number of transactions that need to be adjusted if you okay after the year end. That is, what are the examples of event after reporting periods, or what are the examples of adjusting events? Events that need to be adjusted. If it's okay after the reporting period, so adjusting events. Events that, that will call for adjustment in a financial statement. I'll be getting it. That's good. So that is the, the concept. So we're going to take our time and then analyze all the examples stipulated in what in the standard or the examples given to us by what IAS 10. Thank you. So we'll pick the examples one after the other. We have about four examples that you should know that cost so examples examples of adjusting event adjusting word event so that's the examples now let's look at the examples so examples of what adjusting event examples of adjusting event the first example that we are going to look at for is settlement of claims at the courts after the reporting period that required an entity to adjust the amounts recognized in financial statements. Good. So now let me take it again. Now, anytime after the year end, you made a um, settlement like court case, you have a pending court case. That word, a pending court case. Just that, I read the example. You have a pending court case. So 2019 December, there's a pending court case. Just that the verdict are not be what determined. The verdict or the ruling have not been given up. So you're hoping that things will go to your favor. But suddenly, generally, they pass the judgments and then you have to pay 50,000 cities. Because in December, you are sure, according to IAS 37 provisions, you are sure about the settlement of this money because you thought you are going to win the case. Yes, you thought you are going to win the case. So you are comfortable or you lead. So everything worked for you. But suddenly, January, end of January, January 31st, the only came and then they find you of 50,000 cities and they paid that money instantly. So now, the standard is saying that, in fact, I just the 2019 financial statement, even though we prepared it already, I just did because there's an indication that this court case we will settle 
an amount if we probably lose the case. That's good. So that is good. So now the example will be the settlement after the reporting period of a court case that confirms that the entity had a present obligation at the end of the reporting period. So example one, settlement. Settlement of what? Settlement of settlement of court case. Court case afterward after the reporting period, but if there's evidence, please long, but I'll summarize it here. So when you get the material, you can read further. Good. So statement of court case, statement of what court case where where there's an evidence that there's a liability or there's a pending amount that need to be brought to be paid. So it must be event after the reporting period. That is it. Good. So first example, Clegg. Now, example two, very important. Now, example two says that um, impairment of assets after the year end. Impairment of what? Assets. After the year end. Good. Now, the issue is this. Let's assume that in 2020, we have received information that suggests that one of our assets has been impaired. Meanwhile, we are in 2020. We are in what? Let's say we are in 20th of what? February 2020. Auditors are doing their work and they are about to even finish the audits. And then one of our uh, directors called that information reaching him suggests that one of our vehicles had um, impaired. So we should adjust the financial statement or we should ignore and treat as what non adjusting events. So anytime you have information that suggests that any of your assets had impaired previously, you know, we prepare the financial statement, the financial statement for 2019, but you had information when, after the reporting period that you realize that mm, the asset that we have included it, uh, the asset has what has been impaired. So what do we do? Let's now adjust this financial statement. So that is it. Now how? Let's give a specific example. So impairment after the reporting period. But here, there must be indication. There must be what indication. So impairment. Impairment after the year end, but there must be evidence of what it existence before the year end. You only realize it. You saw the physical duration of the goose after the year end. That suggests that in fact these goods had what deteriorated before the year end. Yeah, that you only what realize it. So it's like the goods had already expired before December, but you didn't realize it that the good had what expired. You only realize it in what people. Oh, that is event after reporting period. Okay, yes, that's the first condition. Two, it's an adjusting event. Why? Because there's an indication that this good has what got or expired before the year and just that 
You only realize it all. You saw it in the tibri. Good. So that is it. And then you are fine. So I'll give a specific example of this. Now, when a customer is being declared bankrupt after the year end, or the customer decided to what, die. So a specific examples are one. But we say impairment of assets. Impairment of what? Asset. We said impairment of asset. Good. We said impairment. So impairment of assets. You know, we didn't stress no matter current assets or what? The non current assets. Example include what? Include receivable. If a customer is being declared a bankrupt after the year end, then there's an indication that any amount that a customer is owing you will be what there's a chance or will be written off or will be bad. So that's bad debt. So that we call it bad debt after the year end. So when any of your customers been declared what bankrupt, bankrupt, good. When a customer has been declared bankrupt after the year end, then it means it confirms that a loss existed at the end of the reporting period on what any amount that you are yet to receive. So that's the true receivable. So bankruptcy of a customer. So when a customer has been declared bankrupt, so let's just summarize it and then you are all fine. Good. So bankruptcy of what? Of a customer. Or what if the customer decided what? To die. He decided to die. Oh, yes, it's true. You decide to probably so you, so he's avoiding the debt. Because if he died or killed himself, you can't also kill yourself to take the money. Or, in fact, if you want him to pay the money, then unless you do kill yourself and then follow him to the graveyard and then go and take your money from there. So that is it. Yeah, you've been seeing people committing suicide. So that one is an example of what that, that person has decided that, oh, I'll take my life from my hands because I'm not seeing top on the edge or oh, things are not good. So let me rather go and then stay safe than to struggle here. So if that person is owing you that amount, you can't go and then take it or don't go and then probably take it. Maybe you do not insure what the, the amount to. No insurance. Family members to you. So not pay to you. Because but they are mourning their death that you are, you are talking about the amount that the person is for you. So that one there. Someone's then forget it, right? Uh -huh. So and we're right to talk. So in short, bad debt after the year end must be adjusted. So you have prepared your financial statement in December. But the customer died as well in February. The customer was owing you 2,000 cities. In fact, we got it in this year, 2019, that you made a loss. Because that customer, at December, the customer was owing the 2,000. Just that February, the customer passed on. So the amount you're not going to probably recover. So it must be adjusted in the current year financial year. That example. Now, the second example is event written down of event or if there was a sale of inventory after the year end or after the reporting period, it may give you what, an indication of the NRV. So assuming that after the year end, you dispose of the goods at a lower value, at what lower value, at lesser NRV. Maybe the current amount of these goods at December is let's say 30,000 cities. 30,000 cities. So that's 30. 30. 
and then uh, February, you saw this goes for let's say 20. In fact, that means you made a loss of the current amount of the goods is 30. You sold for 20, so there's a big loss. Here, there's an indication that this goods, which exists before December, if I does impaired, that's over impairment, so it must be written down. You know that inventory must be written, or inventory must be measured or value at what the lower of the cost, that's the current value, cost is the same as the current value, and the NLV. So the lower of cost, and what NLV. Select the lowest one, and then you are what done. So, so if, if the NLV of an inventory is what lower, lower after the reporting period, all this must be after reporting period. So all this it must be after reporting period. Now let's continue the example, and then we are fine. Now. The next example, that's example three. Probably you can put that example three down. Determination after the reporting period of cost of an asset or proceeds from assets sold before the end of the, world, the period. Now, let's assume that you have what? Um, sold an item. You sold it. You saw the goods on 30th November. And then they brought the invoice. Or you submitted the invoice to the customer exactly 20 days after, so around December. Getting to the end of December, you invoice the customer. And the customer brought the money. So 30th November. The customer bought the money around 15th of, around 20th of, let's say, December. So, good. So, let's see. You showed it 30th November. But the customer paid you, in fact, 20th December. Good. Just that both the receipt and the invoice was kept under a certain drawer or seal. So it has omitted from the books. You find the invoice, February. February. When you're looking for some of the receipts, hand over to the auditors, and then you realize that it was in it. So in short, the actual sales took place where? before the year end. But you did not notice that you've made a sale because the receipt or the source document has been what kept in a drawer. So, so it means eight details will not be part of the details that you've reported in the financial statement. So what do you do? Just bring the financial statement or call for the financial statement and adjust it. So the value, add it to your sales, add the cost to cost of sales, and then you are done. Add the money or the cash to your, your bank balance at the end of the reporting period. So that is it. So that's example one, three. Or it can also be like this. You bought some goods. You bought some goods from, let's say, South Africa on... 20th of December, but they promise you that they will use seven days to deliver the goods for you. So they are showing you that they use five working days. So on the seventh day, they will deliver the goods for you. So roughly, latest by 27th or 28th, the goods will arrive and then it will be part of what the year end goes. On 28th, the goods never came 30 31st never meanwhile you've paid everything will be everything has been scanned and then they pay the goods to you just that the goods was on transit the goods on transit finally 15th of january 
15th of January, the goods arrived. It might be treated as what? 20 or 19 goods, not 20 goods. Because everything, all the transactions took place in 20 or 19. So that is the third example. Now let's see the next example. The last one. But the last one is interesting. It's what an interesting example. That's example four. That's a um, discovery of what fraud. That suggests that the financial statement that we have prepared is incorrect. So, if after the preparation of the financial statement, we discover that you no, know, there's some fraud, which has uh, which will affect the validity of the financial statement. Then it means that we have to call for the financial statement and what adjust it. So, in short, we've talked about um, sales and purchases. And then for the fraud, and then we are done. So these are the examples of what non-adjusted events. When you see this in the question, sorry, these are the adjusting events. When you see this in the question, it must be adjusted. The financial statement must be what adjusted. So these are what the examples of what adjusted events. Sorry for the non-adjusted. Good. Now let's move on to non-adjusted events. non what adjusting events and then you are fine non-adjusted events and that's the end of the game non-adjusted events when non-adjusting events non adjusting events This is event after the reporting period, which provide evidence of their existence after the year end. So with this, this is the year end December, and this is the January. Now the issue is this, the transaction will occur here, but it will provide evidence that it exists after the year end. That becomes what non adjusting for adjusting it will occur here, but it will tell them no, you only me, you only see me here today, but actually, I exist before the year end. That is what non adjusting that's that one is adjusting. This one is non adjusting. Okay. Let me take the game with the adjusting event. It will occur after the year end, yeah, but there'll be some evidence. It will provide evidence that it exists before the year end. Non-adjusting event, it will occur after the reporting period. So non-adjusting event, it will occur after the reporting period, but it will provide evidence of its existence after the year end, after. So after, so from here going, Okay, then if it's from here going, then it's for what? The following year, that's 2020 financial statement. It is not for what? 2019 financial statement. That's event after reporting, but or non adjusting event. We are done. Now, all what you need to know are the examples of what? Non adjusting events. Yeah, the examples are not many. The examples are not many. So, only few of them we are going to look at examples of what non-adjusting events. Examples of non-adjusting events. The first example is dividend. Let's talk about dividend. The one dividend paid after the reporting period. Dividend. Dividend paid or declared after the reporting period. Dividend after a reporting period. Let's assume that 2019 dividend was declared in the first AGM. So they declared it maybe on 20th of what January. 
20th of January. So they declared the dividend. In fact, and the director stated that this dividend that we have declared it on the 20th day of January 2020. We are declaring in respect of 2019 financial year. 2019 was financial year. So December. Yes, 2019. From here to here. January. So they stood in 2020 to declare 2019 dividend. So are you going to adjust it? No. Here, there's an issue. Yes, even though the directors make a statement, clear statement that this dividend is for 2019, not 2020, we are not going to adjust the financial statement. Why? Because as at December that we are preparing the financial statement, there's no indication constructively that they are going to pay dividend. No, there's no indication. So this dividend that you have declared it, or you paid it 20th January 2020, it will take effect from that date going. So you start owing the shareholders from that date. Even though you declared it 2020 and it's for 2019 financial year, you are not owing the shareholders until you make the, that statement. How we get it? Uh -huh. So what if you did not declare any dividend? You're not owing anybody. So that one, there's no indication. So it means that before the year end, nothing suggests that we are going to what, declare dividend or we are going to pay dividend. Now this, this issue is very important. Dividend declared anywhere you stand to declare dividend is for that particular year. So this one is for 2020 for financial statement preparation purposes. Why? Because get to the year end, dividend is a decision that should be a policy or decision normally taken by the board of directors. So before the year end, if such decision has not been made, then we don't owe. We don't owe until we go and then Commit ourselves that okay, we are going to pay dividend of thousand Ghana. So that is it. So that the issue is this: if politicians stop promising, then they don't owe any promise. If I've not promised you anything, I don't owe anything to probably any service to render for you. But as soon as the day that I start, or the day that I start promising, okay, I'll do this and do that. That day, they start counting. So that is it. So before the year end, there's no provision, no liability should be recorded in the books. Good. Example two. Example two. Now let me cite this example before I go to an accent where you paid it for me. Now you know the two. Let's assume that, let's assume that your organization. At the end of every year, they declare bonus. At the end of every year, when things look good, when things look good, good, they declare bonus. And now this year, in fact, things have been super, 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 super good. And then they've declared a bonus in 2020 January. Will it be event? after reporting period, but yes, it's event after reporting period, that's first condition. Condition number two, will it be adjusting or non-adjusting? Good. Now let me take the question again. After the year end, you pay bonus or part of the profit, you pay it to what? The directors, why? Meanwhile, that's what you've been doing, though. Not first time. Almost every year, when things look good, you reward the directors so that they can also be what be happy. That is IS19 employees what benefit. 
employee benefits. So, like bonus, maybe get together or profit sharing. Now, the underlying word is you've done the, this bonus every year. So, even the year that you said you have no intention, the employees now remind you, boss. And the year has ended though. Uh, Mr. Accountant, you are in uh, January. Let us sit up. May you also? How we get it? Good. Now, this would it be adjusting or non adjusting? In fact, it's an adjusting event. Why? Because you've carried yourself all constructively. There's an indication that every year when things look good, you pay bonus. And this time, things are good. So that means. Let the bonus flow. How we get it? And then constant, you carry yourself that every year when things are good, or in situation, every year there must be bonus. Whether things are good or things are bad, even if in COVID, there must be bonus. Good. So such an indication suggests that there was, even if December has ended, and then if you put a financial statement, and the bonus have not been paid. They have not been, even been declared. You are owing them. Why? Constructively. So that is it. So that's the fifth example that I'm giving. So profit sharing or bonus payment after the reporting period, which is as a result of what? As a result of what? Regular or routine payment. That's a constructive. You've created an impression that every year you pay what bonus. That's an impression that you've created for your employees. And then one year, no bonus. And they're attacking you and say that, oh, but I don't owe you any bonus. Sure. It's constructive. So that is it. Now let's let me continue my example because I keep in because of the dividend. Dividend specifically is non adjusting. But bonus paid after reporting period instead of the previous year is adjusting. The next one is going concern threat. Going concern threat. Going concern threat. That's the next one. Going concern what? Threat. Going concentrate. Now let's let's take um, COVID. Yes, in fact, twenty twenty is a perfect illustration. As we are aligned, December we prepared twenty nineteen. It's twenty nineteen December. We prepared a financial statement. Now March, in fact, in March, yes, that's when we started our lockdown or April. Wow. In March, there was a clear case that the 2020 business year will not be good. So, which affect our going concern? There's an indication that we are going to lose heavily. And this loss will affect our survival. So, after the year end, after the year end, there's an indication that, hmm, the financial statement that we have prepared, we are not going to survive in the next 12 months. Why? Because things have changed. COVID have destroyed a lot of uh, issues, a lot of items. So it has affected our survival. That's the going concern trade. Now, these trades, should we go and then adjust the financial statements? For instance, we have lost five, Hundred thousand cities due to the COVID nineteen pandemic. Just between January, just between February and March, before we publish the financial statement, we lost five hundred thousand cities. So the question is, should we record it as loss in twenty nineteen financial statement because we've not published twenty nineteen financial statement? Good. 
Now the standard be telling us that this loss should not be adjusted. No, don't go and adjust 2019 financial statement. Yes, because 2019, before the year end, there's no indication that COVID is going to shut down your business. Before the year end, there's no indication that you're going to lose 500,000 from COVID. No, no indication. So don't worry yourself. However, disclose it if it's material. If it is immaterial, ignore. If it is what immaterial, do what ignore. But if it is what material, then disclose it. That's all. Disclose it. And then use what you call IAS what eight. Change in accounting policy. That means you are moving from going consent to what breakout basis because your survivor is in doubt. So that would be, you apply IASH. Wow, done it. That's what changing accounting policy. It means that, now the going concern policy that you've adopted, that your business will survive. In fact, change that policy now to what? To break out basis, but do not adjust the financial statement that is it and that's the end of event after reporting period please we have nice questions on that can you join us when we are going through the question solving stage and then you'll be fine kindly subscribe if you have not done that and turn on the notification button or the bell so that new uploads you will be notified Thank you very much. Share the link to, to your friends, then subscribe.